281, Readings. Part 8. Let all those who have signified their willingness to look to God for guidance know that God has remembered them. That they are conscious of being alive, with the abilities to hate and love, should indicate this to them. Let each individual know that it came into life with a purpose from God. Let each individual know that it is as a harp upon which the breath of God would play. A lull may not be as prophets or as preachers, neither may all stand in the halls of learning as directors of men, know that you each have your part to do. That God hath so willed that man should be free to choose, should indicate for each individual his relationship to God, that may only be manifested in the manner the individual treats his fellow man. All are aware that selfishness causes many to be downtrodden, living in hovels, that greed, as is being manifested, would make slaves of thy fellow man. Yet each individual as an individual, and as a group, may fulfill those words, he stood between the living and the dead, and the plague was stayed. Thus each individual is alive unto God or dead unto self. As to the periods. As near as practical, let there be unison of purpose. Early in the morning call unto thy God, and in the evening forget not his love nor his benefits. Then, at that period when ye each are first aware, as ye awake, be still a moment and know that the Lord is God. Ask that ye be guided, this day, to so live that ye may stand between the living and the dead. In the evening as ye sit at meat, be still a moment. For there is greater power in being still before thy God than in much speaking. Again give thanks for the day and its opportunities. And so may ye, as seekers for divine guidance, be uplifted. Let each seek more and more, in their daily lives, to be one of those sent by the Lord, the Christ, to someone, to awaken them to their opportunities in the love of the Christ. Then, let each of you so act yourself that those to whom ye speak know ye walk and talk often with the Lord, with the Christ. For he hath chosen each of you as a messenger to someone. Fail him not. In the activities of the prayer group, much has been accomplished and a few have interpreted or realized the scope of this portion of the work. The following is about meditation and was given to me. Austin Rice. By a member of the Norfolk Healing Group Miss 993. It is long enough so that my letter consists of six pages this week instead of four. I read one time that the best way to learn big business was to work for a big businessman and see how he does it. Likewise, I think the best way to learn about psychic matters is from those who have had long experience and success. This woman has perhaps greater healing power than any other person in the association in Norfolk. Meditation. I think I was the first member of the present Norfolk group who contacted Edgar K.C. It was before the K.C. hospital was finished at Virginia Beach in 1928. During the time the hospital was being built, some of us from Norfolk would often drive down to Virginia Beach. And of course we were interested in all the new buildings which were going up. Someone said, I wonder what that building is over there on the hill, referring to the K.C. hospital. And another said, I guess it's a nightclub. Then, several weeks later, one of my acquaintances came down during the week to visit a friend at the beach, and she asked the friend if the latter knew the purpose for which the building was to be used. And the friend returned, yes, it is to be a hospital. And she further said, it has two doctors. One doctor goes to sleep and tells you what is wrong with you, and the other doctor treats you. This acquaintance of mine told six of us this information. Naturally, it made us all very curious, because we were all truth students. A short time thereafter, she continued, a number of people from Norfolk were going on a pilgrimage to Cape Henry, which is located a few miles north of Virginia Beach. All six of us students were going on the pilgrimage. And we decided to leave home early in the morning and spend the day. Thus, we could go to the beach first. And we would go up and inquire about this new hospital and these two doctors. Like pilgrims, which we were, we started on the pilgrimage, she told me. 
But on the way to the beach, we each one were concerned as to how we would make our approach. None of us was sick, and we didn't know what we were going to say. We decided that one of us would be the spokesman. Since the husband of one in our group was a doctor, we selected her. Then, she explained further. The hospital was still in the process of being built. When we arrived there, Dr. House met us. Then, our spokesman made her little talk, of course, that her husband was a doctor, that we were interested in this new hospital, and that we had come to find about it. And Dr. House took us through the entire building, and he also told us about Edgar Casey's work. Just when we were starting to leave, Mr. Casey came in. Then, we remained an hour longer talking with him. He informed us, she continued, that the hospital would be open, officially, the next Sunday for opening dedication services and he invited us to be present. Before leaving the hospital, I made an appointment for my first reading. Up to that time, I had not accepted reincarnation. But after talking with Mr. KC, I had a great urge to have a reading. It was the second reading given to any of the Norfolk group. She explained to me that she had made an appointment for a reading first of any of the group, but she had found it necessary to return to Norfolk that afternoon. Therefore, one of the other girls in the group had obtained a reading before her. I asked her about her psychic abilities before she met Mr. K.C. Before I met him, she said, I had taken quite a number of courses in psychic study. Upon coming into contact with him, I found that he not only had the usual psychic information, but also he had the Christ teachings. Immediately, I realized that here was a man who had just what I wanted. When I had my reading, it explained why I was so interested. After the reading was over, Mrs. K.C. informed me that in a past incarnation I had been Edgar K.C.'s daughter. His approach was the type I had been seeking. In addition to all the other information, the readings included mercy and the law of forgiveness. They said that the sin of omission is brought to account and must be met by each individual, but that the sin of commission can be forgiven. Then, I asked her again what psychic abilities she had developed before she met Mr. K.C. And she related, I had healing power when I was a child. When my father was quite ill at that time, I could go into the room when he was coughing and bring spiritual healing to him, and he would get instant relief. Of course, mother thought I pleased him merely because I was the baby. The nurse always asked me where I would place my hands upon him to bring relief, but I could never tell her in advance. I never knew until the time came to do it. Father always said that, wherever I placed my hands, it eased the pain, and his coughing would always stop. To this day, I cannot tell where I am going to place my hands in healing, until I get the urge, where to place them at the time of application. In connection with her truth studies, she informed me, I had been told that I had healing power by one of my teachers in metaphysics and that I should use my gift for healing. The first reading verified the fact that I had healing power and stated that I had been taught under Mr. K.C. and in other incarnations. With respect to psychic abilities other than healing, she said, before I saw Mr. K.C., I had a few visions and psychic dreams, but they became more frequent afterwards. When I was a child, I had the power to get anything I wanted. If I was at school and the girls wanted anything from the teacher, they would get me to do the asking because they knew I would get it. I never attributed that to any psychic power. But since coming to understand psychic power, I know now that it was such power that gave me this unusual ability. My brother would say, when I wanted anything, sis, you will have it before night. Now, I am very careful not to hold any strong desire for psychic manifestations, such as dreams and visions, for example, because I know that I can get them. Besides, I know that I will get them whenever it is God's will that I should. In meditation in the healing group, she said, we try to follow as closely to the directions given in the readings as we can, because Christ has promised to direct this group. Therefore, we try to keep our healing in accord with that which has come through the readings. And we were told in the readings to keep close to the Christ way of healing. For we who were in this group in the beginning were with it, because each of us had done the same thing in past lives. 
This applies to the original seven members of that group. Of course, she explained, each one of us will pick up our own development and healing. But Mr. KC said to always check it with the methods which Christ used, that is, those which were given through the readings. Then, she referred back to an incarnation in a period about 12,000 years ago. My first training on healing took place in the Temple Beautiful when I was incarnated in Egypt. And at that time, I was the prophetess. Mr. KC was the high priest, known then as Rat Ah, and we worked together in the healing. The priest, Rat Ah, gave a physical marking on the body of those individuals who passed through the temple service, thereby fitting themselves for their life work. And the prophetess gave a life seal. I have a mark on me now, she told me, which was given to me then by Mr. KC, as priest. It was the duty of the prophetess, she further related, to interview all who came into the temple beautiful, in order to find out their life work. Therefore, as the various individuals came before the prophetess, she was able to tell them what their life work should be, and direct them to the proper service in the temple beautiful, for their best development. She also referred to some of our modern church service. Later, she said, that temple service became known as what we now call confession, although the latter does not include the temple service in its entirety. However, that is where confession originated. But it has lost much of its power, perhaps, because the priest in our time may not have the psychic ability which was possessed in those days. We are more encased in matter now, and our psychic ability is not as great now as it was then. But if we live spiritually, as we did then, we can gain it back. With regard to meditation, she said, we hesitate going too much into that because each individual in past incarnations has already set a pattern. And the purpose of our way of meditation is to help the individual to perfect his own pattern. And that best can be done by surrendering our will to God's will. Until we do surrender, we cannot get the true picture of our pattern, because it is influenced through self, jealousy, and fear when we get it from our conscious self. Our conscious self is under the influence of our subconscious, and sometimes there is hate, fear, and doubt in it. It is only as we give up self and become willing for his will to manifest that we will be guided what to do. I always like to take a spiritual truth, she said, and give it physical application, something tangible. I have often used this illustration for some of the girls about the little acorn. The reason I use this is because around my neighborhood there are many acorn trees. In the fall when I am taking my walk, I often step on the acorns, and I have taken an acorn in my hand, realizing that in that acorn there there is a perfect pattern of an oak tree. Maybe that acorn will never become an oak tree because it is not fulfilling its natural law. It may do some good as we step on it and crush it. It may fertilize the ground. But it will not become an oak tree. However, with respect to each acorn which no longer desires to be an acorn and is willing to go into the earth and give up self as an acorn and fulfill God's natural law, this perfect pattern which is within it, through patience, will become an oak. As long as it wants to be an acorn, it cannot be an oak. You can't be two things. You cannot let self rule and fulfill your divine pattern. There must be a desire strong enough to be put into action. Often, people want a thing because someone else has it. But there is a price to be paid for everything we have. There is nothing which can be had without a price. Then she continued discussing meditation. When we meditate, she said, we are careful that we purify this channel before we bring down this power. A lot of people can bring down this universal power without themselves being good. You don't have to be good to bring it down, but God have mercy when you bring it down under such circumstances. In healing meditation, I am using one way now. I may use something else six months from now. I know Christ said, I am the way, I am the door. It is through that door that I approach the Father, and by no other door. Jesus said, if you come up any other way, you are a thief and a robber. That is the way I approach it. Go through the Christ door to become one with the Father. I go through the door of the Christ to the Father, she continued. 
Then, as that power comes back, it passes through the Christ again to make the oneness, a power going up and a power going down. Then the Christ distributes that power. He makes the connection with God, and he distributes the power. Then, we are at one with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As I pray for individuals, that same force goes out through me, and I connect it with the Christ within them. As I feel within me that connection with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I see it manifesting in the individual. In healing meditation, I hold that thought in my mind, as long as I hold that individual's name. That is the way I carry on healing meditation when I am absent from the person. Then she explained, when the individual who is seeking help is present, I may vary at times according to the need of the individual. In meditation, she does not keep the image of Christ in mind. She keeps the thought in mind which she has set forth above. I asked her to tell about healing group meditation. When I am in a group, she said, I never ask the different members of the group to pray. I arrived at that conclusion when my sister was ill, and the reading suggested the battery treatment. They said that each time a different individual used the battery, it should be demagnetized, and that you should select one of the discs which contact the body to be the positive disc, and the other one to be negative. After you make your choice as to which disc is positive, whenever you use the battery, attach the positive disc to the body first, and it should be taken off first. The readings told me that, often in using mechanical instruments, I would get spiritual truths. And it came to me, if it were true with these two battery discs that one should always be the positive one, would it not also be true, when individuals come together to pray, that they should select one of the group to do the praying? This is not because any one individual is better than any of the rest, but that one person should be selected to be the positive one through which the power would flow. I had this verified by the readings, and they said it was correct. She said she may meditate one way one time, and another way another time. One time, she may only say, God have mercy on me. She told me, we have never had anyone who has kept strictly to the information given by the readings, who has had any physical trouble whatsoever as a result of meditation. I have never used any process of purification before going into meditation. This may be necessary for some people. If someone else can meditate best that way, it is perfectly all right. I don't feel that it is necessary for myself.